Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Lucy. This is Chili, Benjamin, Davis, and Kelly with me on the stage. Today, we'll be playing the first movement of Ernest Bloch's first piano quintet. Um, Bloch was born in 1880s in Switzerland, and he learned the violin. He studied with the one and only Eugene Isai at the conservatory um, in Brussels. He moved to the United States later on to settle down and to start his teaching career at the Menace School of Music. Then this piece was composed during 1921 to 1923 when he was teaching at the Cleveland Institute of Music. Noting that the theme of this year's festival is incredible decades, I thought it would be quite fitting to contextualize this quintet through two decades that truly uh, show uh, the intensity of Bloch's musical writing. This was in 1910 and 1920s. So in the 1910s, Bloch's music was deeply inspired by his Judaic heritage and his fascination with the Bible. He frequently collaborated with French Jewish poet Edmond Flegg, who he had a deep appreciation for. And this collaboration would be facilitated by Flegg translating biblical psalms into French and Bloch writing the music to accompany the texts. And so throughout the 1910s, the, his musical output was dominated by musical psalms, biblical psalms for voice and orchestra, as well as his famed Israel Symphony for five solo voices and orchestra. But Bloch was also deeply fascinated with Hebrew chants and the Hebrew language. And uh, one of his works during this decade, uh, Shalomo for solo cello and, and orchestra, uh, really exemplify uh, this Hebrew language. And interestingly, uh, the piano quintet we're playing today has a lot of harmonic and melodic similarities to Shalomo. And so I, we have to beg the question, what is this melody really exemplify? And in documentations uh, by Bloch himself, it's stated that Shalomo's cello uh, is King Solomon, contemplating over his kingdom of Israel. And so, although not explicitly stated, the piano quintet also exemplifies King Solomon and that Jewish tradition. During the 1920s, Bloch was made the founding director of the Cleveland Institute of Music. While he was there, he taught composition and conducted the student orchestra. He also taught uh, various chamber groups, which helped move his composition style from a more uh, vocal and orchestra perspective to a more chamber-based approach. Uh, one of our coaches gave us some great tips on how to visualize this piece. Uh, we were told when playing this to imagine ourselves in a dark factory with machines slowly starting up and gaining speed around us. So uh, this piece uh, marks an important milestone in my musical career. It was uh, the first time that I've had coaches tell me to play more out of tune. And that's because, uh, you know, I guess that should be a, a warning to you guys. But um, Bloch actually wrote quarter tones in this piece. Quarter tones are, they're basically notes that lie in between the keys of a piano. Piano keys are usually separated by semitones or half steps. So I'll demonstrate the difference. Here is a half step. Here is a quarter tone. Yeah, usually it sounds more out of tune. <laughs> so you can, you can hear the difference. So uh, in this case, Bloch was using these for uh, particularly, I guess you could say an ugly effect. He wanted, um, I think he wanted a lot of pain to be uh, communicated through those quarter tones. He had found out his mother died just a few months before he wrote this first movement. And I think, I think you can hear that kind of uh, wailing and longing in these quarter tones. So while we were rehearsing this piece, we found that the softer and more painful places like Davis described were they demanded more attention than the louder and more intense passages. Uh, we had to be extremely sensitive so whoever was playing the melody could come out more. Uh, for the agitated and more angry places, we had a little more room to experiment. We tried different tempos, different bowings, and we really tried to maintain the written dynamic. Uh, this piece is really depressing. <laughs> But putting it together was really fun. And 
And I hope that as we play, you can hear some of the darkness that must have been going through Block's mind. <laughs> 